Okay, so good evening, everyone in Asia, and good morning if you join uh, with uh, Mr. McGuire and I here in US. We are in the morning at eight o'clock in the morning. We, you know, just starting the first cup of coffee and getting ready for this wonderful um, um, Zoom call, right? A webinar. So, um, and uh, everyone in Thailand, everyone in Asia, I hope um, you all have a great week. Um, the weekends, it's uh, just started. I know uh, Ban is playing uh, the tournament this weekend. Good luck for Ban and everyone who else uh, to play the tournament. Thank this you, weekend. George. Okay. All right. So um, just for a, a housekeeping, just a um, protocol for do a Zoom call, please mute your microphone during the call. Okay. And if you have any question um, during the call, please go ahead and type in your chat uh, button at the bottom. Uh, but at the end of the uh, at the end of the Zoom today, um, toward the end, we're gonna leave 20 minutes for Q and A. Please, you know, if you have any question or anything like that, um, raise your hand um, digitally. Uh, you can do digitally or you can do uh, in the camera right now. Um, and then I will call your name, um, just state your name and your question. And Mr. McGuire and, and myself can 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 help answer anything that you need. Okay. Um, but um just want to thank everyone who joining us today. And I hope you all excited about AJGA coming to Thailand for the first time. Um, it's gonna be May 3rd and May 5th. Um, it's gonna be very high competitive uh tournaments and um, you know, looking forward to see uh good golf. Uh, put it that way. Um, with that, um, you know, I, I type in the chat room that we have about 190 people now on the group chat. I, I told you this is personal um, because my own two son who play golf, George and Josh, wouldn't be here at University of Virginia playing golf without AJGA. Okay. And I always tell people the, the sooner you get to know the AJGA organization, the sooner you get a chance to play AJGA, um, the better, because it's all about preparation. For myself, um, as I just typed to you this morning, I didn't know anything about golf, junior golf. I even have to ask somebody, what are you doing with a camera? You know, it, it was just, I'm just so bad new with golf. And I got to know AJGA when George was 16 years old. It's almost too late, almost late, but we got lucky. Somebody gave us a white, uh, what you call exemption card, right? To get into qualify. And I didn't even know, you know, we were playing with every, every tournament we play, junior golf tournament, but we never know anything about AJGA, even though we live here in Virginia. That was talking about like 12, 15 years ago. OK, and then since then, I keep telling everybody, if you know me, you've been my client. I tell everyone it's the highest level. If you want to go step up um, to college and professional, this is the platform that everybody have to participate. And then, um, you know, I I'm thank you that uh, they allow us to be a partner uh, hosted in Thailand. Right. And today, you know, our guest speaker, uh, Mr. Patrick McGuire has been at, with the AJGA for full time, six years, and he actually longer. Um, he know everything, and he's a manager of uh, international um, pathway for AJGA, and also uh, PBE star. So a lot of people got to learn about PBE. So this is this is a person who in charge of a PBE <laughs> system. Okay, ask anything you like because. If you don't ask now and you ask me, you know, I may get you information today and maybe tomorrow, maybe a month from now. But right here, the next hour is all yours. OK, so with that, I um, want to thanks again, Mr. McGuire, to be with us today. Um, good morning, sir. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Yeah. So um, why don't we start with just a, just a quick one? The reason why HHA coming to Asia, because HHA organization, you just mentioned, it celebrated 45 years, right? Yep. Um, for junior golf here in US last year. 45 years. What was the reason why start expanding outside of US? Well, we've had 
an international membership for many years now, but it's finally hit around 10% of our total membership, um, our members outside of the U.S. So we realized that there was an underserved community out there uh, of our membership that we weren't offering a pathway to our tournaments for. So um, we created the International Pathway Series initially to serve uh, our current international membership that uh, so we can offer them performance stars and an easier pathway to get here. And then down the road, hopefully we can help um, in the next few years, grow our international membership so that more junior golfers around the world can have a, a pathway to AJGA. Okay. So the reason why you serve uh, the membership, uh, international member, it's perfect. And and how yep. many tournaments that currently in U.S. and compared to outside of U.S.? Oh, for AJGA, we have roughly 140 tournaments in the U.S., um, with one in one in Mexico, one in Puerto Rico, one in Dominican Republic, but those are tournaments that we've hosted with partners for years, um, and Panama as well, which is a newer one. But and then outside of those events that we directly host, there's only been 12 International Pathway Series events that we've uh, brought on so far that have either been run or uh, a couple that we have planned to run in the next month or two, including yours. Um, so there's a big difference between the U.S. and international events on our schedule right now, but we hope to change that soon. Yeah. So, and it's roughly, tournament is 12 out of 140, right? It's almost equivalency to the membership, 10%. Yeah, it is. Right. And that's something that we're trying to focus on, too, is um, allocating enough performance stars to adequately serve those international members um, mm -hmm. in those events. So uh, we're, we're trying to find a balance so that we're not favoring one or the other. But yeah, until those events and membership grow, it's going to probably stay around 10 to 12 percent uh, in the initial year. OK, so now you hear it. We got to keep growing HHJ member to 20. So that way we can have more tournaments. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Sound about right. Okay. I love it. Yes. <laughs> All right. So uh, in and and then outside of those uh, out of the uh, twelve tournaments, um, you probably had you know a few in Europe, and a few in uh, in in Asia. In Asia, you have three countries, right? In China, you've been there for a few years. Is that sound well, about we right? Have, we have been. Um... We hosted two events in China last year and one the year before. And then um, we actually haven't had any in Europe yet. Mm. Uh, the first ones to come to Europe will be later this year. Uh, I, I believe we're going to Qatar, England, and maybe France. Um, not confirmed yet. We haven't signed anything yet. But um, primarily Asia and South mm. America for the International Pathway Series so far. Okay. Okay. Very good. Um, so we are the third country in Asia. Um you know, China, Taiwan, and and now Thailand, and we uh, we will be um, host two tournaments in Thailand this year, right? So, yeah. um, what what are, what are you expecting to to see people participate in in Thailand, HHJ Thailand? Well, I mean, we've had plenty of great Thai players come through HHGA over the years, um, whether they're coming directly from Thailand or they find themselves based in the U.S. now, but we're expecting a great event. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm, I was looking over the golf course. It looks fabulous. And uh, I know the event will be top tier for the country of Thailand and for AJGA standards. So we're expecting great things. And all of those players um, that I've been able to review so far have been extremely competitive. So we're expecting high, high standards to be met. Yes, yes, we will do for sure. We not let you down. Good. Um, <laughs> we we uh, I've I don't know. I've probably been in uh, maybe ten or twenty AJJ tournament a year for the past ten years, yeah. including <laughs> invitational. So yeah, we we will certainly meet the uh, you know or hopefully um a little bit uh, uh a bit bit uh a little bit better than standard. Okay, normal. I I know you will. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, all right, um, let's let's dive down to it. If someone wants to play AJGA in U.S., right, and and you use the system PBE system, right? Mm -hmm. How? What is strategy to get into play tournament, and what level they should start? Right, you got invitation, mm -hmm. you got open, you got all star, you got preview. You know, if you if you can give us, you know, the big scope, it would be wonderful. 
Yeah, the best place to start is a preview tournament uh, because we actually don't don't look at performance stars for entry there. Um, those are specifically for new members with us that haven't played a tournament yet. They're fielded from oldest to youngest, and we do have a few of them that are for 12 to 15 year olds. Um, so those are great places to start. From there, you'll look at open tournaments or junior all-star tournaments. Uh, the junior all-star tournaments are specifically for 12 to 15 year olds. And then the open tournaments are for 12 to 18 year olds. And that's where entry is based on performance stars. The more stars you have, the easier it is to get in. And if you don't have enough stars, we have qualifiers associated with each tournament um, to, on the schedule. So you'll have an opportunity to play your way into the tournament if you don't have the stars. And then from there, that's when you get into the invitationals and that's when your ranking becomes important. And we, we don't need to dive too deep into that right now, but uh, yeah, that, that's the general pathway is previews then junior all-star and open tournaments and then invitationals. Okay, good. Um, thanks. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to ask this question because I, I got a lot of this question from uh, parents. Um, one, qualify. Is it based on PBE star two? No, qualifiers are not based on performance stars. Those are based on playing opportunities during the current season. So people that have not had a chance to play yet with us are going to be the first priority to get into a qualifier. We want to find opportunities for everybody to play. Um, unfortunately, there's not enough tournaments or staffing to do that all the time, but we want to find opportunities to play in qualifiers or where we find people that haven't had a chance to play yet. And we try to put them in first. Great. So then, and now I, I was, I was going to say, um, I, uh, thank you for expanded qualify field too. Right. Mm -hmm. it, it used to be very limited. It's like, now it's like fulfill. For yeah. We've been able to especially you know covid put a, a halt on our growing field sizes but we're starting to bring those back and expand qualifier field sizes we're expanding some tournament field sizes and uh we're able to provide a lot of opportunities this year which is going to be great okay all right so uh, the second one is preview you 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 mentioned that uh, the first one that you start is a preview um mm -hmm. how many times that they can play they can only play a preview once in the season um, because it is designed for new members. So once you've played one, you're no longer considered a, a new member that hasn't played with us. So we're going to then direct you into junior all-star tournaments or open tournaments, depending on your age. And uh, you'll be done with the preview series. Okay, good, 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 good. All right. So um, before we move on to PBE, um, so the PBE that uh, player earn will be earning from uh, AJJ Thailand can they use right away? Yeah, as soon as the event's over, George or someone on staff will send me the results and I usually get them updated within uh, two business days of them being sent over. So as soon as I update that status, it will be in everybody's account. And if you're not a member with us yet, we'll create an account for you and we'll store those stars so that when you do join, if you join, you'll be able to have those stars already in your account ready to use. Okay, good, good, good. So. Yeah, you can uh, you earn it in May. You can use right away if you come in this summer in US, right? So the winner of this uh AJ Thailand get A star, which almost pretty much guarantee that you you know, almost, almost you, you can be be able to play some of the tournament this summer. Yeah, and eight stars is a, a good number for junior all star tournaments too. Um on average, the junior all star series for twelve to fifteen year olds takes around five stars typically. So Eight stars is going to be plenty to get into that. And then there are quite a few open tournaments that have larger field sizes now that um, eight stars would be able to get into. So if if, if the field, if the full field, like uh, 78 players, right? Um, what, what's the normal for open? The average for open tournaments is usually around 17 stars. But again, that's an average. Our yeah. spring tournaments are extremely difficult to get into just because we don't have as many of them. Um, so there's a heavy focus on one or two tournaments a week instead of eight tournaments a week, like the summer, mm -hmm. um, a 78 person field. It also depends on who sponsors it. If we have a big name sponsor like Jordan Spieth or Justin Thomas, it's going to be very popular and tough to get into, but many of the tournaments throughout the Midwest, the Northeast and Northwest, oftentimes we're able to expand past that 78 field size and get into single digit number of stars uh, for entry. Okay, good. And, you know, in the spring, most of the times you have to be uh, fully exempt, right? 
<laughs> I uh, looked oftentimes, up, you know. yeah, it, it definitely is easier. But um, something else we're working on this year is eliminating, uh, or not eliminating, but downgrading many events from offering fully exempt so that it is easier to get into. Because last year, we had seven tournaments that went fully exempt for entry. And we don't really want that. We don't want it to be impossible to get in. So we're reeling back some of the fully exempt opportunities um, across the U.S. and trying to make it easier for some of those tournaments to get into moving forward. Okay, good, 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 good. Well, it's all, all about uh, fair play. <laughs> yeah, opportunities. Exactly. Good, very good, very good. All right, I'm going to move on to the next topic. Uh, but if I know you have question about PBE, but hold on, okay? You can type in. Uh, at the bottom to make sure you don't forget your question. If you type in, we will make sure that uh, Mr. McGuire will answer at the end during the Q&A session, okay? But PBE is the key, all right? And how to earn it is another story, right? Mm -hmm. One opportunity for sure is in Thailand, the, uh, the winner will get eight and, you know, four and so forth. All right, now we talk about AJJ as a whole in terms of um, player development, um, you know, because you have different pathway within with different series, right? It's preview, uh, all star, and and open. Um, for for the player development, how did you see they grow with the AJGA and then get to college, college recruiting stuff? Yeah, I mean, we're constantly looking for new ways to improve the AJGA experience for junior golfers uh, to develop into successful golfers and people. Um, and we work hard on, on all of the programs that we do have, whether it's our code of conduct policy to ensure that they're operating themselves properly on the golf course and in the golf clubhouse, um, teaching them how to write thank you notes for uh, building relationships and things like that. So we're trying to develop good habits on and off the golf course constantly for all of our members. And I think we see it go a long way when golf courses come back and want to host us and they invite us to be a tournament at their golf course instead of us asking them. Um, same with sponsors. Sponsors come to us because our juniors build such good relationships and develop over the, the course of uh, their membership with us and eventually go on to college where they have success like Josh and George. Um, you know, they both played quite some time with us and then went on and it seems that they've done very well for themselves. And I, I think AJGA played a small part in that, um, <laughs> but you know, it, it's really nice to see them develop over the, the years. Yeah. Well, well, I mean, certainly um, developed a big part because now you mentioned it's not just about golf itself. It's about, you know, um, writing um, a thank you note or learn how to speak when the, you know, the winner, you have a yeah. champion speech. You know, I remember, um, you know, they were like so, I would say, uh, afraid to speak in public but you know yeah. as they grow they got better but uh yeah you train them well um so yeah so um about college recruiting how about that um i know every ajga you always have a sign sheet for course attendance you know course in attendance for that particular mm -hmm. tournament in general how many courses normally recruited let's say recruited from the ajga field right uh, we have a great partnership with the Golf Coaches Association of America. And I think we, in total, have a little over 1,200 uh, golf coaches that are members with us or have a, an account with us. And they can recruit directly at all of our tournaments and through our systems. Um, we provide them all of the player profiles and resumes and swing videos so that they can view online. Um, so even if they're not on site, they're constantly able to recruit through us. And when they are on site, we have uh, you know, anywhere from a few all the way up to our senior showcase tournament in Las Vegas, where we have nearly 50 golf coaches that are actively recruiting for spots on their team at the event at any given day. Great, great. Yeah, and then, you know, I was at um, Anika Invitation at, uh, in Orlando in January. I think mm -hmm. I probably saw, I don't know, 40, 50 coaches at the tournaments. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I mean it 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 yeah. would be very very strong. Um. Okay, what about um? Here's another thing that I you know I I I I'm with the HHA for a while, but um, this is another thing I I saw is that your membership fee never haven't increased for a long time, or something because right. it seemed like 
it, 10, 12 years ago, it was here. And now it's like every other junior golf tournament organizer exceed you guys already. Yeah, our membership fees, we're proud to say, haven't increased for the last, I, I think it's been 12 years um, since our last increase. And actually over the last two years, we've decreased our fees. Um, so we've lowered the cost of membership on a few levels over the last two years. We've lowered the cost of our qualifier fees, our preview tournaments, uh, as, and we're moving into the next two years trying to lower other fees as well. So while everybody else is going up, we're trying to decrease our fees as much as possible to make it as accessible as possible because I know golf and travel and everything is extremely expensive. So anything we can do to lower the cost and make it as accessible as possible is, is what we're going to do. And also the, it's reflecting to the registration fee, right? Um, I mean, 295, it seemed to be there for a long time already. Yeah, it's been there for as long as I can remember. And like I said, over the next couple of years, we might even be able to lower that, but we've lowered our qualifier fees down from $110 to $95. We've lowered the preview tournament cost from 230 to 215. So we're trying to find opportunities to lower the costs anywhere we can. Good, good. And, and another thing that's, I know this, it used to be cut, right? It used to be maybe two day cut. So uh, you played mm -hmm. that round, but it seemed like that one also do away as well. Not entirely. We're bringing it back some this year. Um, mm. We we had the cuts prior to COVID when we had larger field sizes. Um, but now COVID made us shrink our field sizes quite a bit. And we're able to expand them now, uh, being four years removed from it. So we're expanding our field sizes. And not every tournament has a cut, but there will mm. be more on the mm. schedule moving forward that have a cut. If the field is 132 or 144 players, we'll cut it for the last day. I see. Um, Okay, good, good, good. Well, good to know. All right. Well, um, I know you're responsible in many area at uh, with the AJJ. Could you give us some thing that it's becoming? You know, like technology wise, or something that will yeah. be more friendly to user for uh, players and families. Well, I know. Um, I mean, we're constantly trying to evolve our technology and advance it as much as possible because technology is advancing at record paces as it is outside of golf, uh, as we all know, but we're trying to implement new uh, technology for swing videos so that we can include flight scope uh, swing data on the videos for coaches to view, which will be great. Um, we, we hope to finalize that soon. And then we're also bringing out, um, you know, we've implemented golf genius scoring systems for mobile scoring uh, on the golf course so that we can, provide live updates online, both for coaches and for families and uh, friends to watch online and keep up with the scoring. Um, and so we're also doing, uh, looking into options for advanced statistics to keep on your profile for coaches to view. We're trying to explore every possibility to implement technology where we can, um, just to, to make it a better experience for the players and also for the uh, spectators and coaches to view it. Um, and we're also finding ways to implement it on the back end where people might not even notice because uh, for ways to use, like if you get accepted for the Liberty National Ace Grant program, we're finding ways for you to directly use money out of an account rather than pay the money and get reimbursed for financial assistance. So we're trying to find every opportunity we can to, to implement new technologies to make it as easy as possible for the members involved. Oh, okay, good, good. Now I know why I saw um, Kamala in the first hole in the 10 hole at the Anika invitation. So that is that what you? Well, at the Anika on? actually, that was, um, it, it's very difficult to live stream a tournament, but we've tried live streaming a tournament at Anika. And so we had live video online of the tournament, um, which we've done in the past, but we're trying to find new ways that we can do it and make it more efficient because um, we don't have a full, enough staff members to run a whole golf course worth of cameras out there but we were trying to offer a live stream option for people as well to see at least a few shots of the tournament online okay all right very good very good 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 so yeah well with that i mean i ran out of question to ask um if you know you have i'm going to open up the floor for the audience um if anybody have question um please feel free um, raise your hand and then we'll call your name and ask your question away. 
Anyone? I see um, Michael put a question in the chat, actually. Oh, okay. Um, That'd be great. Let me... Yeah, that was it. That was a question from me, Patrick. If you want to. Yeah, reading it Hi, right Michael. now. Great. Thank you, Michael, for joining us today. So no it looks looks like it has to do with um, getting a direct spot in a tournament, like an exemption spot. Um, and it's something that we've considered before, um, but the I don't think we're going to do that with the International Pathway Series at this time. Um, the performance stars being able to earn status and, and use that, um, it, it, able, it allows us to keep the competitive entry format. Uh, to ensure that we're bringing in the most competitive golfers possible and and evaluating everybody fairly and on the same level. Um, it's something that we definitely have considered and and it's not necessarily out the window for good, but um, yeah, and and it, it, for the cost aspect of the, of the question, like I said, we're trying to find every way possible on our end to make it more affordable um, and find opportunities uh, to you know lower our fees and lower our our entry costs. Um, I wish I could do something about the airlines and air fees, but unfortunately I can't do that yet. Yeah, no, that's, that's great, Patrick. Um, the, my only thought was just with that and the international series was uh, mm -hmm. that students or juniors over here in Asia, they'll have now, thanks to George, they'll have two chances this year to earn points. Mm -hmm. But the juniors in America would have a lot more opportunity to start accumulating more a lot more points uh, yeah for that. yeah and i know there's only two opportunities in thailand this year um but this is just the first year of this program so it's kind of last year was um kind of a trial run and this is the first full year where we're actively looking and, and trying to field opportunities where we can um so we hope to bring more opportunities i mean like i said earlier this is initially just to serve our current membership that we have for international members but this is also going to grow our international membership and as it grows we're going to grow the opportunities with it um so i i know it's a slow start and we're trying to keep it that way because we don't want to get ahead of ourselves but uh, this is something that we hope to grow very quickly over the next uh two to five years and hopefully bring a lot more opportunities uh, to both Thailand, other parts of Asia, and other parts of the, the world. Yeah, and, and and the timing of the tournament too, uh, you know, I, I, as I say, you know, we, we hope that um, we, we can, we, you know, I, basically we start a little bit um, late in the, in the year, but I hope that we can uh, do something before the summer season here because that's where the bowl of the AJJ tournament are right uh, mm -hmm. between may june and july and august uh, yep. i think a, a big part of that so if you can earn the uh, pb star before you coming to 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 here that would be the best ideal right but yeah but something that you earn in november you can use for next summer too right yes yes uh, i'm glad you brought that up i was um, gonna yeah. mention that earlier the Performance stars are good for the remainder of the year you earn them in and all of the following year. So anything earned in May will be good for the rest of 2024 and all of 2025. And anything you earn in November also will be good for all of 2025. So if I, as an organizer, strategically, so if I host a tournament in January, two of them, so they mm -hmm. can actually use a PB star for two years then. Yeah, that would be the that would basically get you the most bang for your people stars. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> now yeah. now and, we learn. And yeah, that's definitely something I suggest anytime uh, someone asks about mm -hmm. scheduling. I suggest the earlier in the year, the better. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, weather plays a factor and daylight plays a factor, so it's not always possible. But the earlier you can do it, the better, because then those players are going to get even more for those PBE stars. Yeah. Yeah, so they got two years. Okay, and yeah. two summer, two season. Yeah, exactly. All right, well, good to know. Thank you. All right, any other question from the floor? Wiz, you coming here? Yeah, I, have, I have some Discussion. questions for, for you, yes, here. Okay, Charlie. Mr. George? Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah, here. 
So, go ahead, so what is the difference between so what are the difference between the international series tournament and the American IGGA? I mean the two tournament series. Yeah, the the difference is with an AJGA tournament here, our staff will directly be on site running the tournament and the uh, performance stars might be a little different just depending on how big the international event is um, or the tournament that we're hosting. But the international events are actually hosted by people like George who are uh, either from the country or have deep relationships in the country and they're able to put on a tournament uh, for people that um, they might personally know and players that they're more familiar with um, and golf courses and everything that they're more familiar with. So we basically put it in their hands. We trust them to put on a great event and they're able to host it on site uh, on their own through relationships that they have. Yeah. Okay. I see. So, so, so which one is more better? So international series or the normal GGA? Well, I think it, it depends on what your goal is, but I think the American Junior Golf Association in America would be, if your path is to go to I college, be golf, better, right? Yeah. That would be a better opportunity because we're able to offer um, not only PBE status, but we're able to offer rankings points. Those events are also going to be on site where college coaches can attend more likely. Um, so it, it's just going to be a better recruiting opportunity for, for what you can get out of it. Not to oh, not so the that American AJGA, so uh, American AJGA can uh, let a lot of university coach can watch your tournament, right? Yes, we oftentimes have multiple college coaches at every tournament. Um, and like I said earlier, some of them, like our senior showcase in Las Vegas in December, can have up to 50 golf coaches on site any day. Yeah, okay, I see. So the international series, the AJGA, only the coach can see your score. Yeah, the coach will be able to see your scores, and they'll be able to view that in your AJGA profile or through the, the website uh, of the event organizer. But yeah, on site, they'll be able to attend AJGA events in America um, a little easier because we're going to have tournaments closer to their schools. Um, they're not going to yeah, have to travel as far yeah. and things like that. Uh, so when when you just win the AJGA tournament, uh, so you can get a sponsor, right? You can get a what? Uh, the sponsor. Yeah, sometimes you can get uh, a sponsorship through that or some sort of relationship with either TaylorMade or Callaway or something like that. Um, or you can get uh, recruited from a college coach. Um, yeah, typically it's directly on site there. Yeah, okay, thanks, sir. You're welcome. Okay, Patrick, this is what I understand, and then collect me if I'm wrong, right? Um, if you earn a PBE star now, today, right, um, you're not going to be able to uh, utilize it for the tournament until a month and a half from now because the tournament already passed the deadline. Yeah, so we do field our tournaments about five weeks in advance. Mm -hmm. So if you earned a star today, you would be looking at events um, in mid-April to use mm -hmm. it for. So, so this is why, uh, Charlie, um, the International um, Pathway Series will help you um, because if you earn a star in Thailand, by the time you come here, you can use it right away, right? Because the, the tournament finished, you know, the deadline is five weeks. But if you wait, you don't play in Asia, or in China or Taiwan or Thailand, you come here and you play the first tournament. You sometimes you don't even stay here a month, right? You're not able to use it for that uh, yeah. already. You see? Yeah. So that's why it's a stepping stone and it's pathway. That's why they call it international city pathway. <laughs> yeah. Cassie. And you can trust us. We will run the same as AGA. I know you will. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. Okay. All right. Other question. Um, we have uh, Mr. McQuire on the line here. Anything you'd like to ask? Um, like, how can I get sponsor exemption? How many sponsor exemption spot? Anything. How can I get my children to play? Okay. So, all right. Um, we don't have any other question on the line here. 
But um um Patrick, I I won't go. I'm gonna leave. Uh, sorry, sorry, George. Can I yes. can I just quickly jump in? I, I, I'll ask the question that you yes. asked. If yes, the sir. AJGA do offer uh, sponsors exemptions, like what criteria do they have, or do they even have that stuff? And no. yeah. We so there are things like sponsor exemptions or committee exemptions um, that players can get offered. Typically, it doesn't come from us. We actually don't offer those directly, um, and we we don't really encourage people to search for them either. Just because if we did, every player would be calling all of our sponsors in every golf course and hounding them for exemption spots. Typically, it comes through a direct relationship uh, between the player and the sponsor, or the player and the golf course. Um, for example, TaylorMade is a big sponsor of ours, um, and they, they're they able to offer for a few events a year an exemption spot to someone that might not be able to get into the tournament on their own. So TaylorMade says, we, we want this player to play in this event. We're sponsoring them, uh, and we want them to, to play. So they might send us that name, and we'll put them in. Most of the exemption spots this year are actually through USGA because they started their own player national uh, national player development program and so they have um, a few exemptions into a few events this year that they'll be able to offer players that otherwise wouldn't be able to get into our tournament so yeah and 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 each tournament has limited uh, spot for sponsor exemption right yeah yes um usually it's only two to three uh, per event we'll have you know two or three sponsor exemptions uh for each event Sometimes it's more depending on the sponsor or the type of event, but typically it's two to three. And if you are able to get one, um, you're only able to use two a season. Oh, okay. All right, two a season. Good, good. All right, we have, um, thank you, Michael. Um, we have another question from Ban. Please go ahead. Hello. So my question is, how often do we compete in tournaments? How often do uh, you compete in tournaments? Like how, how, how often should we compete in tournaments? I would say as much as you can. Um, you know, you want to, the more you play in tournaments, the more comfor comfortable you'll be in tournaments. So the more you can play, the more comfortable you can get and the better you can score without having to worry about it, um, uh, you know, dealing with the pressure or uh, the competition. Um, so as often as you can play, I, I would play. Uh, and is it better for us to participate in more tournaments but not do as well, or is it better for us to participate in less tournaments and consistently get higher rankings? I think it's going to be different for every golfer. Some people can play you know, 20 or 30 tournaments a year at a very high level and be consistent, and some might only play five or six and play well, and both of them can end up in the same place. So it's it's all up to you as to whether or not you're comfortable doing it and, and capable of doing it. Um, you know, the more you can play, the more opportunities you have to earn things like PBE status or rankings points um, and, and build up a, a larger resume. But if you play less and play very well, that would also bode well for you. If you're playing, if you can show that every time you play, you play very well. Oh, easy to Talk about good good question, Ban. Good question. Um, talk about that. I forgot. Um, there's a maximum five tournament you can play a year, right? You can only play five AJGA tournaments a year. Um, the international tournaments don't count towards those five. It's mm. just between open tournaments and junior all star tournaments. You have a limit of five, um, and that's so that we can offer opportunities to all of our members without the same players showing up at every tournament. But that's just for those two tournaments, open tournaments and junior all-star tournament. Uh, and so preview doesn't count. Preview doesn't count. You are limited to one preview, but yeah. that doesn't count towards the five. Okay. And invitationals okay. also don't count towards the five. All right. Just the only two. All right. Well, we, I learned, so. I mean, I thought I know a lot, but I learned so much uh, new information today. Thank you again for your time and be with us today. And also looking forward, I hope you can come to Thailand. Um, we, you know, they're all going to look forward to see you at the tournaments. Um, but anything else, if you have any questions, please feel free to contact us at any time. 
Um, once again, just want to thank for all your time to participate today and looking forward to see you all at uh, HHA in Thailand on May 3rd uh, to 5. Um, that's coming up soon. All right. And Mr. Mr. Mc oh, Michael, one more question. And uh, no, George just giving you a thumbs up. Oh, thumb up. Okay, sorry. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So um thank you, Mr. McGuire, and uh have a good day. And uh we're looking forward to see you soon in Thailand. Yeah, thank you very much, George. Thank you everybody for the questions, and I I'm looking forward for uh, a great event. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Bye bye.